Seattle Husky Nation. Welcome to Beyond the Bench, a weekly series where we sit down with each of our head coaches here at Bloomsburg University to get thoughts about their program, themselves, and what it means to be a Husky. This week's episode is sponsored by Clark Associates. We would like to thank them and the rest of our corporate sponsors for their continued support of Husky Athletics. I'm Dave Lazaring, Sports Information Director here at Bloomsburg. Today's guest on Beyond the Bench is the head coach of our Huskies baseball program, Mike Collins. Coach, great to see you, and uh, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks for having me, Dave. Look forward to this. So, Coach, uh, you know, first off, uh, good news so far from the PSAC. Announced recently, we're still planning on moving forward with a spring season. It's been kind of a whirlwind of emotions for you and your program so how have you been able to keep your guys motivated uh, for what lies ahead? Well, this has definitely been the most interesting year of my career. Um, you know, from one week to the next, you don't know uh, what's around the corner. But initially, we, we did our best to stay connected through, you know, just phone calls and, and mostly text messages. And then later, virtually through Zoom calls to kind of keep the guys focused. And here at the end of the semester, we were able to get on the field with the kids that were on campus. And that was even if it was uh, short-lived, it was really good to see them in person and do some baseball activity, not just for them physically, but just, I think, the mental part of it, just to get together. So for those that don't know your background, Coach, uh, talk a little bit about where you were prior to joining the Huskies and how you, uh, what led to your decision to take over the baseball program here at Bloomsburg? Well, after I completed my uh, collegiate experience as a student athlete, I, I, I decided I wanted to give it a shot in terms of being a college baseball coach. I, um, I, I can recall my senior year, first game of my senior year as a player, I was a catcher and I was involved in a collision at home plate. I was trying to something to block the plate, the throw got cut off. I was in a bad position. The, the, the runner ran me over and I blew out my left knee in an attempt to kind of prevent him from scoring. And my, so I came back for a fifth year. So I came back to my fifth year as a DH, but I had to sit and watch my entire, entire senior year. So that first, that, that, that was happened in the first game of the year. So the whole year I'm in the dugout, just watching as a senior. And I think that had a huge impact on me just watching the game as a senior. And it was at that moment that I thought, Hey, maybe I want to stay in this beyond my, playing experience. That's when it first dawned on me. And then I, I recall going home. I was home during a break and I was with my buddy and I was in a car and his dad was driving us. And I remember his, his old man turns to me and says, Hey, what are you planning on doing after college? And I go, I'm, I'm really thinking about being a college baseball coach. And he looked at me, he's like, Michael, you're being, you're being foolish. That's, that's not a real career, you know? And uh, funny, uh, like how somebody says that to you. And I remember walking out of that vehicle thinking that son of a gun I'm gonna I'm gonna show him right so that 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 was kind of the fuel for me um, when I graduated after my fifth year I started to volunteer and then I was a part-time assistant at a small junior college a private junior college that later became a four-year and I I really hustled in my time there and I think I was really motivated like hey if I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do it you know I'm not gonna you know I wasn't gonna look at what I was getting paid or what the expectations were. The, my expectations of myself were super high. If I was going to do it as a career, I was really going to do it. So I was an assistant for one year and then I became the head, head baseball coach at Keystone College. At that point, it was a, still a junior college and it was a great place. I had a great experience. I was really young. And as a, a, a young coach, there was a lot I needed to learn on the job. And uh, during my time there, I was actually an assistant director of admission. So I would I'd go in early in the morning. I would work the guys out strength and conditioning wise. I would take a quick shower, put on a suit, go to the admissions office. I'd be an admissions counselor all day. Then I would change, go to practice in the evening. And then I'd sit it up at night, just making recruiting phone calls. So I was big time into it, doing admissions, doing baseball. And in the fall, uh, we would practice on the weekends and all midweek I would spend going to college fair. So one fall, I remember I did 47 college fairs and college day programs while running my baseball team at the same time. And that was really like, I looked at it as like my graduate school experience because I had to do the admission stuff. I had to learn about how the campus operated. I had to learn about admissions, financial aid, registrar, academic affairs, student affairs, residence life, just in my role as an admissions person. And then I had to organize and operate my baseball program and do alumni stuff and 
uh, study halls and, you know, player development and recruiting and, and the whole nine yards. So I learned a lot in that time. And then I was eager to get out and try something at a different level. And I had an opportunity to be the um, assistant baseball coach at Binghamton University. And when I got to Binghamton, it was in a huge transitional phase where they were going from division three to division one. And my first year there was their first year of division one athletics. So Coach Sanicki is the head baseball coach there and has, does a tremendous job. But Tim is still there and has had fantastic success. That was his first year of Division I baseball. I came in as a full-time assistant. So I was there to recruit and bring in, you know, the first Division I recruiting class. I was coaching the hitters. He was the pitching coach. And it was quite an experience. And um, we, with Tim's leadership, we definitely got better and, after my fourth year there, we made a big jump in terms of success and we did well in the conference tournament and we had some players take in the major league draft. And, and during the, my time there, I was spent a lot of time in the road recruiting. I was recruiting all of New York state, New England, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. So I was living out of a vehicle uh, if I wasn't on a baseball field. So I knew I had a, I like Pennsylvania and I like the state system about, I knew the PSAC was a fantastic conference and that would be a great opportunity for me. Uh, so when the Bloomsburg job became open, I jumped on it and I knew it was a fantastic campus and a really attractive institution to recruit to. And uh, the PSAC conference has a fantastic reputation in baseball circles as far as the quality of play. So, and I was fortunate uh, to have an opportunity to take the position and, uh, here we are, Dave. Here, we went fast. Here we are, and uh, yep. hard to believe, but starting year 16 uh, this spring right. um, as the head coach here at Bloomsburg, uh, you've certainly put a competitive product on the field year in and year out, uh, but these last three seasons, including the 9-1 and one start to the, uh, the COVID-shortened 2020 campaign, you've put Bloomsburg baseball back on the map. Uh, what have been some of the keys to the, uh, the recent success? You know, it's never really one thing, you know, when you have, when you're winning, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things that have come together, I think for me. And uh, if I look back on it, I've had, I've had some really good assistant coaches and throughout my tenure and in each one of those guys have played their part uh, to advance the program. And our recent success, I, I absolutely have to credit the more recent guys that helped me with my recruiting, even going back to Josh Epstein, who's now the pitching coach at Monmouth University. Josh did a terrific job with me developing the pitching staff and helping me with my recruiting. And and then then I moved on there to Pat Brown. And Pat is the full-time assistant at Carson Newman, runs the pitching staff there. And Pat did, a, again, another – he was a great leadership with the pitchers and and helped me. We really pushed a lot of – not every right button, but a lot of, a lot of good buttons in terms of who we were going to recruit and – how they were going to fit in and so on and so forth. So if I look at the roster over the last uh, four or five years, those guys, the, their fingerprints are on that, on those rosters. And then after, after Brownie, then, then we moved on to, uh, to coach Hardy, Rob, Rob Hardy, who did a fantastic job um, with a lot of the current pitchers on our staff and helping us in the 2018, 2019 seasons, which we were fantastic on the mound. And uh, now my current coach, uh, graduate assistant pitching coach, uh, Matt Kress is, he's kind of following in that tradition of, of really making a difference with our guys, you know, and I think in recent years too, there's a lot of people in our department, including yourself that have had made some major contributions to elevating our program and Dr. McFarland and Andrew, uh, coach Andrew Foran, our, our strength and conditioning coach has had a sizable, sizable impact on our player development. Um, Brad Swenson, an academic advising, Mike Olabowski's helped me uh, with a lot of programming for our kids off the field um, that I'm pretty proud of. So, you know, I think recruiting wise, uh, we've been doing a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things uh, right in terms of recruiting the right players. I think in my time, I've really been able to learn from the conference and learn about what type of players do well in our league? What type of players do well at Bloomsburg? And how are we going to get those guys uh, to look at this opportunity? You know, and, and um, that, along with uh, everybody I've made mention of, has uh, allowed us to have the recent success. So your next victory uh, will make you the program's all-time winningest coach. Uh, you're currently tied with the late, great Matt Haney Sr., 
uh, with 314 career wins. What do you anticipate that moment being like for you? Well, it'll be, it'll be exciting. I mean, I haven't been here for a while. Um, you know, baseball has been played at Bloomsburg for a long time. So it's, it's definitely a mean, meaningful milestone. Uh, also has a special meaning for me because I knew Coach Haney. I know, actually, obviously I know Coach Haney, Matt Haney Jr. works right down the hall from me and I see him every day. So Matt Haney Jr. to me is a constant remind, reminder of Coach Haney Sr. because uh, Matt Jr. reminds me so much of his dad you know, his voice and how he speaks and how he uh, walks and talks, everything, his personality. Um, and I knew Matt Haney Sr. quite well. In my days at Keystone and later at Binghamton, I don't know how many hours I spent behind a backstop at some remote field in the state recruiting and Coach Haney be there and we would have long conversations. So, and, and I know how much Coach Haney loved uh, Bloomsburg University and loved the baseball program and um, how invested he was in his career. So, you know, knowing all of that, it's, it's going to be pretty meaningful to me. You've been an integral part in developing the 40-year plan here at Bloomsburg, uh, both within your program and now spreading throughout the department as well. Uh, talk a little bit about what the 40-year plan is, uh, what types of off-the-field programming uh, you've incorporated with your student-athletes, and how do you install that philosophy into your student-athletes? Well, it's something that has evolved uh, gradually over time. And um, myself and my assistant, we would talk about other things off the field that we wanted to do with our students and how we want to engage our student athletes to bring more value to their experience. So um, it started, I, I can, I remember years ago, Dr. McFarland does a great job inviting special guests to our staff meetings. And I had this thought in the back of my head about really engaging our campus and doing things for the guys on campus. And Albra Wheeler, who's a terrific leader in our women's center, came up to a staff meeting and she was talking about uh, her different programs at the women's center and how she would like to get campus, um, different students across campus involved. And she walked out of that staff meeting. And I thought, man, I'm calling her ASAP. And I did. And we got together and we started doing some educational uh, programs and service type things with our women's center for the guys. And I thought it was terrific. And, and I think I, you know, I got to expand upon this. I need to do more along these lines because this was so good. So then it, it went branched out to the multicultural center and different community groups. And in the NCAA, the guys have certain days off from countable athletically related activity and I'll always say, Hey, you know, you have, Tuesday is your off day from baseball, but it's not really off. You know, you have other things that you can do for your development academically and so on and so forth. So on those off days, I spread them out. We're going to do something related to the 40 year plan. And the, the, um, the title 40 year plan actually came from coach Kress because I often would say to my players and prospective players, that it's really not about these four years and as much as it is about the next 40 years. You know, we're really focusing on long-term development and how can your athletic experience propel you forward for the next 40 years. And, um, you know, if, if you come and you play baseball at Bloomsburg and you have a terrific career and we win a lot of games and you're an all, all American and you play pro ball and set all these records, but, if five, six, seven, eight years from now, you are not um, doing what you should be doing professionally and, and you're not achieving as a professional, then I'm not sure we were fully successful in our endeavors. And the athletic part of this and the success in the field is really important, but that's not the whole picture. Our goal is, our goal is bigger than baseball as a program. So Matt actually suggests, he's like, you should just call it the 40 year plan because we're always talking about the next 40 years and how we're going to do things that are going to help you in the next 40 years. So that's how that title came about. And that's basically what the philosophy is. And it's just that constant reminder to the guys, this is about the next 40 years, guys. This is about winning this weekend. It's about winning the conference. Yes, but it's not enough. It's about what are we doing to help you in the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And um, the beautiful thing about it and, and the thing about it that I love is it is constantly about campus and community engagement. So we have so many wonderfully talented people that have so much to offer our student athletes that all I have to do is organize the schedule, really. I, I mean, in, in terms of getting these wonderfully talented people to work with my players 
and to get them up to the upper campus or we're going on to that lower campus or we're going into the community so these folks can bring their expertise to my guys to enrich their experience. So whether it be a program that we're doing sexual assault bystander awareness training with, with our women's center, or um, uh, we're learning about bias and social justice issues with the multicultural center, or we have individuals from outside the community, outside campus talking to our student athletes about important issues, individuals with disabilities. Indivi um, we, we, we did some work with uh, young children in foster care. We learned about the foster care uh, system in the state of Pennsylvania. And we actually met some kids in foster care uh, doing community engagement programs with individuals with disabilities. We'll do some enrichment programming in terms of just uh, like personal finance workshops or, um, you know, uh, drug and alcohol uh, awareness and drug and alcohol abuse and, you know, opportunities for help and so on and so forth. Suicide prevention. Um, I can go on and on and we're always looking for new types of things. Uh, two important facets of it is really to get our guys outside of their little baseball bubble. You know, when I was a student athlete, you go to class, you go lift weights, you go to practice, you maybe hit the training room and then you study and that's what you do. And that's where your head is. I want to, from time to time, pull them out of that little world and get them to see more of our campus and engage with people on our campus and get them to appreciate everybody that uh, makes their lives better. So uh, one of the most important initiatives is our faculty staff member of the week award. So uh, I'll tell them, hey guys, there's over a thousand people that work on this campus. They all have an impact on your experience in your life. And we are gonna, on a weekly basis, recognize somebody. So, you know, all week they're watching, they're paying attention. They're paying attention to the maintenance person that fixes our, our pitching machine you know, or the guy who's cutting the grass or um, the secretary that maybe gives them a little extra attention or the housekeeper or the custodian in the library. And they're coming to me on a, on a Monday night and we have it organized on the team where there's one, one player who's in charge of giving me the name and they'll, you know, Monday night, I'll get a call from them and say, hey, it's the second floor of the library. It's the custodian. She's really sweet. She's super this, that, and the other thing. I think her name is Brenda. And then I have to email custodian, the head of custodial, get the name of the individual. Then on, on Tuesday, we will show up at that, at the person's place of work and surprise them with the award and do the presentation, put on social media. And really is when we walk out of there, the person that receives the award obviously feels really good about it and they're excited, but our guys are fired up about it, you know, and it's, it's a lot of fun and, and it just kind of opens up their eyes and their world to other people on our campus. The other part of the 40-year plan that's critical and uh, pretty excited about it is our professional engagement stuff. So we, uh, we'll, we work very closely with Lori Schmidt and doing trainings to prepare our guys professionally for work outside of Bloomsburg. A big part of that is our professional engagement night, which we've done the last two years in January. So I contact all our baseball alumni. I ask them to get involved and they jump at the chance to work with our guys. So the last two years, we've identified close to 30 alumni mentors, all baseball guys, who represent a variety of industries and professional fields. Uh, we have done it in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have an alum named Matt Croyle who's volunteered to help us uh, with, he's an elementary school uh, principal and he secures his building for us. And then we have alumni that donate food. Our guys will go down, it's professional attire, so they'll go down, it runs from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we'll have 27, 28 of our alums, uh, you know, a very diverse group in our entire team. And we'll have speed networking. We'll have panel discussions, one-on-one -on -one resume reviews. We'll have industry-specific uh, breakout sessions where our guys could sit down with a professional mentor who played baseball and is in a field or industry that they're interested in. And it's great for not just our juniors and seniors, but our freshmen and sophomores, where our freshmen and sophomores can interact with young alums that are only, you know, four or five years older than they are, who are just starting their professional careers. And, you know, you're an 18, 19 year old freshman, you're maybe not thinking about your professional career, but maybe now you are, you know, because you see somebody that looks like you, that might listen to the same music you listen to that is out there starting their career and you're thinking, wow, man, that's gonna be me in a very short time. I better get my stuff together, you know? And then we have more senior 
uh, alumni that are working with our juniors and seniors, giving them very practical advice about the next step and how to leverage their athletic experience in the workforce. So now we're into our third year of the professional engagement night. We're, we're expanding it to a full week and it's going to be virtual. It's going to be through Zoom. This allows us to get more alumni involved from across the country. So we're going to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions and, and, and branch out and, and engage with some other alums that haven't had an opportunity to participate. And it's, I mean, it's been absolutely amazing watching what uh, you and your program have done, um, you know, on campus, off campus, um, just incredible to watch. I'm, I'm a proud recipient of the, uh, the uh, Employee of the Week award as well. So thank you for that, too. Very prestigious award, Dave. It is. <laughs> So let's get back to your, uh, your coaching uh, a little bit and uh, describe your coaching philosophy and who's had the greatest impact on your coaching style. I couldn't, I couldn't nail it down to one individual. You know, I start out, you know, my, my dad has a big inf influence on me because he's a baseball guy and he really, you know, he brainwashed me into loving the sport, you know, like, like a lot of dads. So, uh, so he obviously had an impact and I, I've had some really great coaches not just baseball coaches, but I've had some really good ones. My high school coach, Joe Lally, was a great coach and great, great guy. And I've had wonderful teachers growing up. If I were to look at individuals, too, that have had an impact me, I mean, Coach Sinicki at Binghamton University, um, who's had a huge impact on my, on my career. But I also look at my colleagues across the uh, state system in, in terms of our division. Those guys have an impact on me because they, they do such a terrific job not just developing their players, but recruiting, and they set the bar pretty high. So um, I can't take my foot off the gas pedal for a minute um, knowing, you know, what I have ahead of me in the PSAC Eastern Division. So, you know, every year you got to take stock in what you're doing well and what you're struggling with, and you got to look at what it takes to beat Millersville and, and Westchester and East Stroudsburg and Shippensburg, Mansfield, Kutztown, uh, Lock Haven, and, and it's, it's a high bar. So it's, it's been a while since you've been uh, on the field. Uh, talk about what we can expect from the Huskies as we anticipate having a season here in 2021. Well, I, it's going to be a senior laden group. I mean, we have seven 50-year uh, guys, all of whom have uh, some experience and some significant experience in, in, our, in our league and in the postseason. So we return a good portion of that 2019 team, not just the 2020 team. So, so I, I'm, I'm hoping for much of the same. I mean, we, we have a very competitive group of guys, a very resilient uh, group of players. We, uh, we return an excellent pitching staff. I think in 2019, in conference, we had the best pitching staff in the PSAC in terms of ERA and opponent's batting average. And off of that team, we lost Ashton Reigns, but we returned quite a few really talented guys and Chad Cooperman and Nick Stoner and J.J. Spheerly and um, obviously Jared Marshman and Eddie Herbner and, you know, I can go on and on. So we have a really good group there. And then lineup wise, I mean, Ryan Schiffer was an important piece of the puzzle in 2019. But other than that, we returned quite a few of those guys, too. And I think we got some good young players in, in the last two recruiting classes that can kind of fill in the blanks um, and um, make us better as well. So offensively speaking, in the last you know, five, six years, we've really developed into being the type of team that drives the ball out of the park. And, you know, that's been evolving over time and that's been a real change for us and uh, it's worked. And I think the guys enjoy playing that way. I mean, I'd say seven, eight years ago, we were probably averaging 19, 20 home runs a year. And now we average 45 to 50 home runs a year. And uh, byproduct of that is we walk a lot more. So on base percentage wise, we're up there. So, you know, we, we're a team that's going to slug and we're going to walk and we're going to be a really high OPS type of team. Um, we have some big physical guys that can run it out of the yard. And then um, on the mound, you know, we strike a lot of people out, you know, and I think the strikeout part of it has been a, a big piece of the puzzle for us. So we're up there trying to get swings and misses and, um, as far as developing our pitchers, that's been the, the approach. A few years ago, we got a terrific donation from the front of the program. And through that, we were able to buy a Rapsodo, which is basically a sophisticated machine that tracks ball flight of a pitcher. And we didn't really use that to really um, do a lot of pitch design type things to 
figure out how we can make our pitches most effective and what what's really good and what's not so good and then go from there in terms of pitch usage and pitch development and coach press has done a you know rob hardy did a good job of it now coach press is doing an excellent job of it and we've been striking a lot of batters out over the last two and a half years we've been striking a lot of guys out and i think that's that's really made an impact um on our pitching staff and you know ashton rain set the strikeout record uh in his time and now cooperman's right on his tail he's probably going to break that record you know at the pace he goes and Nick Stoner is striking a lot of guys out right now. So, you know, from a style of play, I, I really like the way we were, we're playing the game right now. Coach, let's get a little dirt on you now. Um, let's talk about first uh, your favorite sports teams. Well, growing up, I was a huge Phillies fan, you know, uh, you know, I was born in 1972. So as a young kid, the Phillies were good, especially in the early eighties and they won the world series in 1980. So I was pretty obsessed with the Phillies. And I remember when I was a kid, my dad, mom and dad would take us to the vet. And that was always like really exciting. That was a big trip, you know, uh, was never really a Yankees fan. You know, I think if you grew up in my area, either you like the Phillies or the Yankees and there were some Mets fans sprinkled in there, but, but I was, I was a huge Phillies fan. Um, and then, uh, on the football side, I always liked the Eagles uh you know to this day i follow the eagles so that's about it i mean a lot of friends were steelers fans but definitely an eagles fan like college football and most people you know either like notre dame or penn state i like notre dame i was always notre dame fan but i i still even though you're not supposed to do it i root for penn state as well in terms of college football never got into hockey dave like you just never was exposed to it so those have been my sports and those are my teams i'm I'm from erie so i have to be from uh, i have to be a hockey guy so (laughs) Uh, did you have any favorite players well i was a big mike schmidt fan you know when i was a kid growing up i love mike schmidt because but you know i grew up in his heyday when he was an mvp and he was one of the best pit best players in the league and you know i always like power hitters and uh, so I was a huge Mike Schmidt fan. I think I met him, you know, there was a Phillies used to do a caravan and he's go around to different places in the winter. And I remember meeting when I was a little kid, I was probably eight or nine. So anybody on the Eagles you liked? Uh, you know, well, I was young, Ron Jaworski, Harold Carmichael, uh, Wilbert Montgomery, you know, um, those were the big Eagles when I was a kid. Uh, always loved those guys. I would later years, Reggie White. Reggie White was an incredible player, so he was always a lot of fun to watch. How about a favorite movie, Coach? Favorite movie? I'll go back to my childhood. I'm going to say The Natural. I love The Natural. I probably saw it a dozen times, especially when I was, young, I was younger. I love that movie. And then uh, later years, I liked The Shawshank Redemption, you know. But I like, I like anything historical in nature, too, you know, if I'm kind of historical type drama or what have you all watch uh favorite food anything italian i'm in all right that's if i had if i had my way that's what i, I could eat pasta every night yeah it wouldn't be wouldn't be the right move for me but i could eat <laughs> pasta every night. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you and we get we get a lot of uh, italian food is the answer on this uh on this yeah. show too so um how about uh favorite musician band any types of music you listen to yeah i well for many years, I guess I was, I'm always a fan of classic rock and that's probably what I would listen to most, Dave. Okay. Um, I think as I got into, you know, throughout my career, I, I was exposed to a lot of country music. Um, I think once I started coaching, guys would put the, the pregame or the practice BP uh, soundtrack on and then there tended to be a lot of country. So that influenced me right there from being around uh, young college baseball players um so then i sort of gravitated to that just a bit okay um you know but i think being around college kids you end up being exposed to a lot of different types of music but that's kind of where i'm at with that that's for sure um so if you could meet anyone past or present living or dead who would it be and why past or present i'm going to give you two dave i would like to list i I would have to say abraham lincoln probably our greatest president and uh you know, I, I think as a coach, you know that uh, the most challenging part of the job is to lead your team through challenging times, difficult times. And that's the hardest part of this. If things aren't going your way. And then, you know, in baseball, there's so many things that are outside of your control. And how do you deal with those things? And this guy's the president during the most turbulent time in American history. And he somehow kept our union together. And 
Uh, I can't imagine somebody that would be more interesting to talk to because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, baseball wise, I'd be curious to talk to Ted Williams just because I'd like to talk hitting with Ted Williams. I guess you're going to talk about baseball and hitting. And if you're a baseball coach, that would be the person you'd want to speak with. So absolutely can't, uh, can't pick a better hitter than Ted Williams. That's for sure. Yeah. And then uh, finally coach uh, what's the best thing about Bloomsburg university. That's a tough thing to nail down, David. It really is. Um, our campus is absolutely beautiful. You know, um, in our recruiting, uh, I always talk to my assistants. I'm like, the number one thing is get them on a visit. We got to get them on a visit, get them here at ASAP. Your goal is to get them on a visit. We get them on a visit, we do the tour, and we have a chance to interact with them personally. And they get to see the place. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But our, our best opportunity is to get that person on our campus. And I'm confident that if we get somebody on our campus, that the conversion rate is going to be very high because our campus is absolutely beautiful. And uh, I got to give a lot of compliments to our groundskeepers and our housekeepers and everybody that keeps the campus in order because it, it's a pleasure to give, that, give those tours. Um, and it's one of those things, too, is I, like when we have kids on campus, generally I'll do the tour myself or my assistant just because I want to be there when they see it. The other thing that I, I'm going to, I know you asked for one thing, would be the people. And it's amazing how many, if you as a coach kind of get to know people across our campus, how many people are there and willing to help your student athletes and help these students achieve and and help them have a, a really full experience. And I've learned that through my 40 year plan initiative and, and just by bringing people together and collaborating with all these talented people on our campus, just how generous individuals are on our campus when it comes to working with the students and how many of them are willing to just put the student experience first. So those are by, uh, I know you asked for one thing, but I'm going to give you two great things right there. That's all right. It's, it's tough to land on just one. That's for sure. It is. So. Absolutely. <laughs> so coach, uh, we really appreciate you taking a few moments uh, to join us here today. We look forward to watching your team take the field here again in 2021. And hopefully we can make some, uh, some postseason trips again uh, come next May and June. I look forward to that, Dave. That'll be outstanding. Absolutely. Head coach Mike Collins of the Bloomsburg University baseball program. We'd like to thank the Husky Nation for tuning in to Beyond the Bench and join us again next week as we will visit with another Huskies head coach. We'd also like to thank once again Clark Associates for sponsoring today's episode. For information on everything Huskies, visit our website at buhuskies.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Again, I'm Dave Leisering. We'll see you next week on Beyond the Bench. Have a great day and go Huskies.